back to Community Storytelling Season 6. I'm Lisa Chrysler, and so glad you're with us here at KCAT TV 15. You know who's been with us since day one, Season 1, Linda Lester. So, Linda, thank you so much for continuing to support us. I hope we never lose you. The whole town of Los Gatos hopes they never lose you. We've got somebody sitting next to me now. I'm so excited to really sit down and chat with him that may have knocked on your door. He knocked on my door. I looked out the window. I said, I'm not answering. You may have done the same thing. He was knocking on everybody's door. Your newest town council member, Rob Moore. Hi, Rob. Hi, Lisa. I really wasn't home. Yeah. You left You <laughs> left a card there, and I said, oh, I probably wouldn't have answered anyway. Yeah. How many doors did you knock on during the campaign? So I personally knocked on about 7,000 doors. Um, How many and doors are there in Los Gatos? 12,000. Um, well, and... So yeah, and, and, and actually a lot of folks, you know, a, a good chunk of people aren't even registered to vote. So I went back and hit some a second time, and then our campaign hit another uh, 3,000 or so with volunteers and so people like that. Somehow you, you touched almost everybody. Yeah, yeah. I th and, it's, and it has truly been the most valuable experience I have had. You know, but honestly, one of the most valuable experiences I've had in my entire life. I learned so much, learned so, so much. So what was the number one issue that, when people would answer the door for you? <laughs> traffic. To a, really? per, to a person, tra because... Beach traffic? Beach traffic, school traffic, work traffic, commute traffic, downtown traffic, all, all kinds of traffic, North 40 traffic. Um, <laughs> uh, but th my theory is that everyone cares about traffic. There's no one that says, I love traffic. So I think that one was, you know, got brought up a lot. Did you promise to do something? Yeah, the, the, <laughs> I, you know, I am very uh, committed to that issue. It's a, that one is, it's, it's really, it's a very difficult issue to solve. It's been an ongoing issue. One of the things that I was um, kind of enlightened by is in downtown, the, the closer you would get to the places in the summer where you have the really bad beach traffic yes. and the Almond Grove and, and those sorts of areas, the more folks there were not so upset about kind of the current state of beach traffic because they bought their house knowing you know, you live in downtown yes. Los Gatos, you're going to have beach traffic. And so it's it's a frustrating issue because I wish there was more we could do. The one thing we could try doing that I'm, I'm still um, very much open to and interested in is trying to get, find a creative way to close the downtown on-ramp. Um, well, but there's we, two of them. Well, right, the, the one at the very end of town. Okay, um, yes. Uh, in front of the, the hotel there. And we tried that once. Caltrans said no. I think there's some creative solutions, but it's it's a really nebulous. It, it's hard to solve. It's funny how you said that, though. So my significant other, Jeff, and I bought a place here in town three years ago, right before the pandemic. And we knew about the traffic. I mean, I've lived in S Santa Clara Valley. I've been on the radio. I covered all your traffic problems. And we said, we know about the traffic. Our realtor warned us. I said, we know all about it. It's what it is. But let me tell you, <laughs> it still gets you mad. I, I, and we'll both say to each other, well, we knew this, so why are we kind of yelling about it? <laughs> Especially on Los Gatos Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness, you know, because you know, okay, I'm not going to even get on the freeway. I'm just going to take Los Gatos Boulevard home. Well, everybody else thought the same right, thing. Right, right, right. It could take you an hour to get home on Los Gatos Boulevard. And we've done traffic studies, and the most disappointing part about that is it's not all the people that jump off the highway and try to, you know, get around, and it's, it doesn't, you don't get there any faster. It's, you should have just stayed on the highway. Did it's, you tell that to Wade? Yeah, yeah, you know, I've <laughs> tried. Yeah, yeah, but um, I live on the boulevard, too. So, so it's, yeah. got to ask you. Where did you come up with the your campaign logo, the the two O's that made the bicycle rims? Because that that was so clever and it stood out, and everybody knew it. Everybody yeah. knew it was you. So one really interesting thing that I had to navigate early on with the campaign is that half of the candidates, more than half of the series candidates, were named Rob. Yes. There were there were three <laughs> three, of three Robs and and there were uh, five people who ran you know a real campaign so I had to figure out how to differentiate myself um, from the other Robs <laughs> and and so I can take no credit for the logo my partner and campaign manager created that um, she went through a few different designs and just came up with the bike and I'm in I bike a lot um, I'm in uh, very supportive active transportation all of those sorts of things and so I just kind of oh. uh, worked I know yeah super yeah. 
better lucky than smart. Yeah. And how many signs do your parents have in their garage? <laughs> That's the, <laughs> you're asking our questions a lot. Yeah, yeah, a lot. I've I between my mom, my dad, and me, we we have a, a lot of and signs. And there's got to be a couple on the living room wall too. Yeah, Come yeah, on. and 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 actually, somebody contacted me out a month ago and said your sign is still up in in the in East Los Gatos, and I was like, I'm so sorry. I was I really tried to get them all down. So if if there is a sign around somewhere, please let me know and I will uh, come get it. I would have said, let me ride my bike over and yep. I'll take it there down. There you go. Should have, yeah, yeah. Maybe hard to one hand it. But. So Rob, how old are you? 12? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. It feels like that. Yeah, no, I'm 24. Who's on a town council at the age of 24? Now, Evan Lowe, I'm trying to remember how young he was in Campbell. I think he was 22 or 23, so, so he's got me beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but um, he doesn't have you beat in Los Gatos. No, I mean, no, he doesn't have you beat in Los Gatos, yeah. everybody on the town council, they're closer to my age. I won't say that what that is, but they're closer to my age. Yeah. So what does that feel like? Yeah, it's 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 really good. I think it's I think it's important. Um, I wouldn't have done this if I didn't think that that I was going to bring an important perspective and voice to you know the conversation. And it's and it's interesting. One thing that that a lot of folks don't know is that the Los Gatos Town Council is is not a paid job, and so I have to navigate being a working professional in Silicon Valley in this town where navigating the issues that we talk a lot about with housing affordability and those sorts of things and it's yeah I think it's a important perspective and you have an important job so I want you to say where you work I, I work at an organization called the San Jose Conservation Corps um, doing what uh, so we I do a bunch of different things we do uh, we build tiny homes I, uh, I love that yeah yeah and, and help young adults that's the program that I manage is the tiny homes but we help young adults who have kind of fallen off the horse get back on and with good paying jobs and we employ about 250 young people in San Jose so 40 hours a week I see you all over town. I won't tell your boss at what hours of yeah. the day because maybe you should be someplace else. I don't know. But how do you ever sleep? <laughs> I, I try to. It's it is it's been, it's been hard to navigate, and it's actually I um, I do this newsletter, and I um, know. yeah yeah, and and one of the things the disclaimer I put in I think two months ago was I'm really if I ever take too long to get to your email or whatever, please bump me. I'm I want to get to everything. I want to. I'm trying to be as omnipresent as possible, but um, I have found myself spending at least twenty or thirty hours a week on the town council, as I think a good town council member should, in addition to forty hours a week. And I my I am lucky that my employer employer is um, actually was an elected official himself and, and understands um, you know everything that goes into that and, and allows me some flexibility but I put in 40 hours a week I catch up you know in the evenings and the mornings on the weekends and since you mentioned emails I think it did take you about six weeks to reply to mine <laughs> that's, that's I exactly think you saw right. me at a town council meeting and it said and, oh and I remember <laughs> and I knew and I knew that, that yeah but yeah. I wasn't gonna bring um, it up but you did so yeah, there yeah, you go yeah. um, I mean 24 years old did any did anybody in the national news contact you? I mean, there are not no. many people. Well, but you laugh about it. But come on. Yeah. There are not many people who are in their twenties, who and not only did you win, you were the top vote getter. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate and it's and it and it was a really you know powerful experience for me and I think it's um, I, I enjoyed every second of it. And um, I did have some folks from NBC Bay Area and all of that contact me about a different story related to maybe my youth, maybe other things. Um, uh, when a bunch of signs got posted about me throughout the town, which is um, a whole whole other thing. But, but I think, uh, you know, it's, yeah, I, I, what is really nice and has been gratifying and, and kind of, um, everyone has been really respectful of me. And, and I think that no one has, um, once I once I've get, gotten to know people, no one has discounted me for my age or um, and all of that. And the the one thing that is kind of nice about the position is I'm one of five and I have a vote. And so if you choose to, you know, think that I you know discount me or whatever because of my age, I'm I'm one of the five on the council. And so you're probably not gonna. I don't know. <laughs> it was those free bagels you would give away during the campaign at the farmer's market yeah, on Sunday. The, yeah, then maybe no, that was this, it. Yeah, I, I really tried to be everywhere. And I'm still trying to do that with, you know, communication and all of that. And yeah. do mom and dad go around saying, you know, my son, town council member? You know, what's funny <laughs> is is my dad was, I think, a better campaigner than I was. He would, and it was in a, it was a di very different way. Cause, no doubt. Yeah, because neither of my parents were even close to politics, anything. My mom's a teacher and um, my dad sells boxes for a living. Um, and but he would he lives in East Los Gatos started going to the downtown Los Gatos Safeway which was new for him and whenever he would go there and just talk to people and say hey just you know my, my son's running for the Los Gatos Town Council which is something I would never do 
I would have far too much, uh, I don't know, I, I, but it was very my nice. My dad, <laughs> my dad who passed away at the age of 92, mm. um, oh. 11 years ago, I'd be with him all the time. And he would tell everybody, you know my daughter, Lisa Chrysler, you listen to her, right? <laughs> and I'll never forget one time we were in the emergency room at Kaiser in Santa Clara. And I think he was maybe almost naked. And the nurse comes in and I'm sitting there with him and he tells her, you know who she is. And it's like, so it's okay. That is sweet. It's so that's, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, you know, that's awesome. I used to say I never changed my, my maiden name on the air so my dad could hear his name every day. So that's really I know sweet. your parents have yeah, got to be yeah. really proud. Here that's, I am talking like an old person. See? <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Sorry. That's, I am 12 years old, so that's, <laughs> <Okay>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you went to Union Middle School. Mm -hmm. I went to Dartmouth. Mm. But you went to Lehigh. I did. Go mm. Longhorns. Go Longhorns. I'm an alum. That's, yeah. You There's know? not too many of us. That's, yeah, uh, yeah in you know, the town. I think I graduated about 10 years before you yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. I think it was like five or, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you went to Cal Poly where both my daughters and both my son in laws oh, went. That's, yeah. So I don't know. There's something between us. I completely agree. And and there's a ton of, there's so many, there, Los Gatos is such a small world in that way. And and I, you know, I met your partner and, and all. Yes, it's, it yes. is truly just such a small, I, before I knew he was your partner. And it's, it is true. <laughs> no, it's just the loveliest little small town that we have. Yeah. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Um, we had just moved here before the pandemic. It's a show about you, but I'm sorry. I'm telling the story or two. Please. But community I'm storytelling. I'm interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I noticed and how I really fell in love with this town is the community. It was during the pandemic, and I would be taking a walk every day, and, you know, you have the mask on, mm. and everybody said hi. Everybody said either good morning or good afternoon the friendliness and it was just a feeling like okay you know we're all in this predicament now we're neighbors yeah we're in the same town so I don't know I mean it's I think it's more so happens in this town than other towns mm -hmm. yeah it's it's something I completely agree I think it's something that's really special it's something that I you know talked a lot about during my campaign and still talk about is is the idea of us being one big neighborhood right where we all are really neighbors and and there's a lot of uh you know, joy that comes with being neighbors, and there's also a lot of responsibility. And so, we, you know, we've been going through these storms and everything, and, and the thing I've been um, trying to push out to people is we need to take care of each other like you would your neighbor, right? Your next door neighbor. And I think you that's... You are next door almost more than anybody else now. <laughs> Probably, But with yeah, good yeah. stuff. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, storm preparation, reminding people where they can do this or get that. It's great. Yeah. How did you learn to do all that? You know, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I'm really, I am in earnest. I'm making it up as I go along. So, so as, as people as see me make, yeah, <laughs> I, we all are, right? Right. We're just all trying our best. Um, but I, I really try to be as proactive as I can on things like next door and, and with a newsletter and those sorts of things where I think that historically, um, the online communication for Los Gatos has maybe been lacking a little bit. And I think that being a younger person and someone that grew up in the age of social media and, and um, I, I, sometimes I'm, I'm a, quite a Luddite, but when it comes to, I, I understand my phone a lot less better than sometimes I think my mom does, but I do think it's important to be active online and trying to engage as much as you can as in as many spaces as you can. And, um, and there's people that will, you know, that will only go on next door, right? Or will only use Facebook or will only uh, look at their newspaper. And so I think it's important to engage with all those different platforms. And I found email to be a really, you know, that the newsletter goes out to like 11,000 people. And that is for me such a privilege to be able to talk to that many people. And, and, uh, and it's got like, I get such nice comments, which blew my mind. People are like, Oh my God, I love this. And I'm like, Oh, that's so nice. You totally didn't have to, you could just, you know, <laughs> put me in your spam mailbox yeah. and yeah. yeah. And so, um, yeah, I think that that kind of proactive communication is something I'm really focused on and, and I've gotten a lot of positive feedback We're going to start knocking on doors again? Because give me a warning. <laughs> yeah, give yeah, we'll, we'll do, we'll do. No, 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 hopefully not. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, no. So you went to Cal Poly to be a politician? Why did you go to Cal Poly? I, so I, I studied political science. Okay. I actually, when I went to Cal Poly, I studied political science on kind of a whim from, from Lee High School. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And um, I'm surprised you got in, you know, because Cal Poly is so impacted and you picked an impacted field, and you, so you must have had good grades at Lee High School. I, I actually, I was, I was not, I was a, I was a B at best I student in high school. Well, no, actually, okay. ask any of my teachers. I was not a. It's, well. it's something I actually try to tell to a lot of um, parents. Is I was not. Uh, 
I, I grew and evolved a lot when I got to college, and, and I think it's, it's um, you know, we're always growing and changing, but it's, it's something that I continue to, to learn, and I think that's, you know, um, uh, good, but, but Cal Poly, I think I would not have gotten into today. And, and uh, <laughs> I if think I, I would have gotten into apply, San Jose State today. No, so. I think it's, it's, it's absurd. Our, the, <laughs> our students work so hard. But um, yeah, and I went to Cal Poly, and, and at Cal Poly, I got involved kind of by happenstance in politics. I got involved in this, uh, this ballot measure campaign that was working to ban fracking, like, you know, really dirty oil drilling in San Luis Obispo County. So you were up against Chevron and everybody Chevron, else. Chevron okay. and $8 million okay. of Chevron and I'm money. i guessing you weren't the top vote getter that time. No, we <laughs> lost. We did lose. But it was a really cool opportunity for me to, that's actually, I knocked on lots of doors. And, and that's where I kind of um, learned how valuable that experience was because whenever even, you know, left, right, center, you know, black, white, blue, green, I was able to have a conversation with people about something that is, you know, pretty controversial, you know, oil drilling. Um, and regardless of who that person was, we could have a conversation about it. And I didn't always convince them at the door or whatever, but I was able to share my experience, share my experience as a younger person who's worried about, you know, climate change in this world that we're, um, you know, increasingly, you know, there's all these increasing issues and we have to figure them out. And so um, as a young person, I, I feel, extra obligated to deal with some of these longer term issues and and that's something um i think about a lot in los gatos as well is is how can we think about 30 40 years down the road are you going to be down um, are you going to be here 30 40 years down I the road? i hope so okay. yeah yeah yes i unless i get hit by a bus i don't yeah um but well, no. no you didn't hear we don't really have the buses coming no anywhere. right 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 yeah that's that's true that's very unfortunate oh, my goodness <laughs> so where am i going to see you around town um, that's a good question. I love all of the coffee shops. So I actually started doing this um, council member community coffee. I'm rotating through all of the, the oh, local coffee shops. And yeah. You know what? We have one, two, three, four, four. Do we have more than four? Local yeah. coffee shops? We oh, have, we have five. Yeah, at least. Right. I, you know, yeah, yeah, I at least five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so, six. <laughs> Linda Le Lester Square has one too. Right, right. And a town like this, and they're all busy. They're right. all they, wonderful. It's, they're, Our coffee shops are so darn good here. Yeah. They so that's agree. a great place to hang yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. So I started my first one in Boulevard Coffee, which is right across the street from, from my house. And love that coffee shop. Love all the people there. Um, I'm planning on doing the next one at the Coffee Roasting Company and then Great Bear. And then we'll go from there. Well, and, um, and call me when you start hanging out at the wineries. Okay? Perfect. Okay, <laughs> we'll do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, we, we're starting something, which I think is so cool. Um, first off, I'm very proud of you. You know, I, I, here I am doing the mother thing. I mean, it's very cool to be 24 years old and be the top vote getter on such an important group as Los Gatos Town Council. So that's very cool. That, I, that's and, very and, kind. And you talk almost more than me. So that's even cooler. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Thank you. You know, and you go knocking on doors. But we, we're starting something every now and then where we have an audience. We have a live audience here. And um, we get questions, and I think we do have a question for you. Please. They knew you were coming, and they're here, and I believe, who's going to, we have our question. Who's our question from? Marlene. I see Marlene raising her hand. Marlene, you got the microphone? My name is Marlene Burak. I'm a 42-year resident of uh, Los Gatos. I'm 85 years old, I, and a senior, obviously. I want to thank you and the town council for funding this KCAT 15 program. It has enhanced, enhanced my social life immensely. And um, the programs and everything are so successful, and I know that it's going to be even bigger in the future. What I wanted to ask you was, I am an avid walker. And I know that you are an avid bicyclist. <laughs> and walker. Okay. My pet peeve, and this was discussed on Next Door for three days two months ago by at least 25 people, is not being able to walk in Vassona Park. Mm. I know that that is a county park. I asked Mr. Simithian the same question. There has to be some way that the bicyclists and the pedestrians can be safe in that park. 
And my suggestion is a very cheap one. <laughs> All you have to do is get a can of green paint and paint the, the path going through the park that the pedestrians face the bicycles mm -hmm. instead of having them come up behind us. Mm -hmm. I'm terrified of w mm -hmm. walking there and I had to stop doing it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's fair. And you know, there are places that do that. Absolutely. You know, I can't, after t just traveling, I know I've seen that many times. Right, uh, no, I completely, thank you for that question. Yeah, I think that's incredibly important. And I've, I walk, um, I, I used to run a lot through Vasona Park. I, I don't run much anymore, which is not good. Um, but it, it is totally an issue. There's And there's technically a 15 mile an hour speed limit, but you see people biking much faster than that through there. And, and it, and it is hard because there's you want to be inclusive of different kind of um, mobilities and and um, different uses of space and all that. And it's a lovely park, and it's it is one of the only options for getting from you know the western port, the downtown kind of areas of Los Gatos, towards the um, north and east parts of Los Gatos. I love that idea of trying to separate the uses. It's something that, that we do on other parts of, uh, on other roadways in terms of with bike lanes and, and all of those sorts of things separating. Obviously, we separate the bike lane from the sidewalk. Right. Um, and, and so that's a great idea. I Unfortunately, this is something I have uh, been really frustrated by and didn't realize how much I'd run into this is the, the jurisdictional boundaries. And so the county, I, I uh, can't do much in the county park, but I will, I'll, I'll send an email to, to County Supervisor Joseph Midian and, and um, bring that up. And we're actually talking about at our next meeting, we're talking about our, um, the budget for all of our capital improvements, which are um, anything, any sort of infrastructure improvement. Okay. And so I'll, I'll bring this up as well um, and just voice that, that this is a, a concern, especially for older adults. And, and we have been spending a lot of time and energy um, in working on our senior roadmap. Um, yes. And so this is part of that. So thank you for the question. Thank you, you know what? so much. Yeah, thank you. When it happens, we are going to put a sign saying this is brought to you by Marlene Barak. Okay? I, absolutely. Okay, we are going to do that. We're going to work on that together, and all of us. And you'll see it because you'll start walking through there again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's been a pleasure having you. I mean, we could talk forever, but we'll have you back. We'll have you back. I'd love to. And thank, thank you for what you've been doing. And also, if I can just say thank you for really making an effort with the homeless population. I it, mean, the entire town council is, but I mean, you have really brought it to the forefront. And I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And I, know I think they appreciate it. It's, it's an the important start. issue. Yep, it's, it's the start. It's an important issue and one that's been hasn't been addressed okay. for a long time. Call mom and dad, tell them you did great. <laughs> Perfect. <Okay>. We'll do. <laughs> <laughs> ah, community storytelling at its finest. I hope you've enjoyed this interview as much as I have, and we'll see you next time. Okay, we'll meet right here at KCAT TV 15, and it's community storytelling, and I'm Lisa Chrysler. Thank you so much for being with us. Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>